Bruce Highway, rookie mistake, Sunday afternoon. Don't travel on the Bruce Highway if you can help it, because uh, otherwise you and everybody else is out there. Isn't that right, Jasper? Unless you want to have traffic. Yeah. Unless you want to have a slow time driving. <laughs> it's perfect for that. I'm flying solo for this segment. Paul's down in Brisbane. In fact, he's been down there most days the last couple of weeks because we've got the 79 in down at McCormack's four-wheel drive. Finally, yes, getting that new canopy installed. Paul, has been capturing the entire process from start to finish and all of the build-out to all the gear that's going in the canopy and a couple of surprises as well. And we can't wait to share that with you. Now, that will be coming up in next week's episode, so you don't want to miss that one. We've all been waiting a long time for this episode to come along. And what about last week? Did you catch our RV Maintenance 101 episode with Darren from hangar -O. What an absolute wealth of knowledge he is. Paul and I certainly learnt a thing or two. And just great information for every RV. It doesn't matter what make or model of caravan or motorhome that you are in. Darren shared so many great tips with us just to keep your rig looking its best in between those professional services. So look, if you haven't watched that episode yet, definitely jump on over and check that out. Now, coming up next in tonight's episode, I am sharing with you my top seven hacks for cleaning the interior of your RV. A lot of the information that you can't easily find when Googling. Then we hit the road and we're traveling south down from Bundaberg. We stop and have lunch at a really quaint little pub in the country. It was my birthday and such a great little spot. One we would recommend you stop in and have a meal at if you are in the region. We drive over Queensland's oldest bridge. That that was an experience and also very unexpected and we camp off grid at a beautiful lakeside campground it is a private horse property and look if you love water sports or fishing or secluded bush camping and amazing sunsets then you will absolutely love this one it is called hidden gold we were so happy to find it and we would encourage you to find it as well so stay tuned for all of that spectacular footage particularly the drone footage coming up later in the episode all right that's enough from me grab yourself a drink enjoy the episode thank you again for watching and we'll see you next week bye guys How good is this? We're talking about Paulie's favourite topic. It is, of course, cleaning. Isn't it, Del? Isn't it? I, yeah, I love it. <laughs> No, in all seriousness though, we wanted to share with you our top seven hacks for 
maintaining and cleaning some of the products in the interior of your van. Things like the fans, the vents, the screens, those trickier items that personally I found there's not a lot of information out there on tips or the right way to do things and I know some of these things I've been doing really tediously when in fact they're super quick and easy and you don't need a lot of products to be able to clean these things. So like we did last week with the exterior maintenance and we I think mentioned WD-40 like 15 times and thank you Sue for counting yes. for us. I'm probably going to mention vinegar and bicarb soda that many times as well because these are the products that we use to clean just about everything on the inside of the caravan. What's awesome about them is that they're natural, so they're good for you. They cost like seriously dollars and cents at the supermarket, so it's not gonna blow your budget. You don't need expensive cleaning products to be able to do all of these things. And they're really good for the environment. You know, we're so conscious of the places that we go and camp, and then of course what we are putting down our drains and out into the beautiful environments that that we're living in so good all around these guys okay now I'm going to start with the natural drain cleaner we teased it last week when we were talking with Darren at Hanger Oak grey water and your drains can get stinky that's whether you're living in bricks and mortar four walls or whether your home rolls down the road like ours does so bicarb and vinegar is an excellent way to give those drains a bit of a flush out get them nice and clean and stop that stinky grey water from ruining your camping weekend or experience what I do is just a good shake of the bicarb now i should say i do this regularly so once a week in fact and i found that just doing that it's quick and easy takes honestly a couple of minutes to do but that really helps keep that gray water smell down and it also keeps the gray water outlet on the exterior of the van looking and smelling much nicer as well because that can get pretty foul so a good sprinkling of bicarb then I tip, uh, you know, just one of those. I, I don't measure, just one of those of the white vinegar in. Those products react together. They create some kind of cool, we should do it as a science experiment for Jasper, some kind of cool uh, chemical reaction. And then what I do is chase that down with a little bit of boiling water. So about 500 mils, I just use my little pot here that we use for water when we're boiling for a cup of tea. And I just chase that down the drain. Now I have read online that if you wanted to give your drains and your pipes a bit of a deep clean, you could actually chock up the grey water outlet with an old rag or a cloth or something. Do that process, let that bicarb vinegar mix sit in your pipes and then flush it out. So that's probably a good idea. You could also do that with your grey water tank, just close the bypass valve off Great and idea. let it sit for at least a half an hour. Yes, and actually there's a good recipe for that while I'm talking about recipes we are going to put up a blog post on our website with all of this information and some bonus recipes for some of these I guess more natural cleaning products that you can make quickly and easily at home so we will put in that information on the grey water tank cleaner as well good idea poorly okay Let's talk about screens. I think the window screens in your RV are probably the trickiest thing to keep clean and also clean. Now we've had three different types of screens in our caravans over the years. I love these ones because of their functionality. I also love that they are midgy screens, which means they're a lot smaller but that can also make it harder if you have kamikaze bugs at any of the campgrounds. They just get stuck in the screen. So what I found, I picked up this little brush. Now it's a hard bristle brush. I actually for memory think that I got it from the supermarket in like the dishwashing section because it's meant for scrubbing your pots. But I thought it was pretty cute and it works really well on the screens, particularly if you're trying to get any of those dead bugs or things that get caught up in the screens. Now, I will say you need to be gentle because if you go in all gung-ho, you're probably going to damage your screens or push them out of the sides. So really gently, but 
the little bristles are really good at poking anything that's caught in the screens out. And then I like to follow it with a really good wipe down. Now you could either use a damp microfiber cloth be prepared for it to get really gross though. Um, so often I will use in its place a baby wipe or a cleaning wipe that you can then throw away. Now of course we um, try and always use biodegradable wipes and you can find them at the supermarket as well. But wiping them over like that, it's scary how much gunk comes off them. And of course best practice would be to do both sides. So do your inside and then make sure that you've got hubby out there on the ladder, hey? <laughs> wiping the outsides to keep them really nice and clean. I think the key with all of these things is that regular maintenance that we were talking about last week as well with the external elements on the van. If you're doing these things more regularly, there's less time for the dust and the dirt to build up and nobody wants to spend their camping hours cleaning, but it'll save you in the long run. Okay, let's talk about the Max fan. Now we haven't had one of these in our caravan previously and I absolutely love it. It provides great ventilation when it's clean. It also provides a lot of light into the caravan as well. It's quite scary how quickly that vent gets full of dirt and dust just from it collecting from the air. So what's great about this is that it's got the little plastic clips, I'm sure Paul's overlaying now for you. You can easily take that vent off. Now again, you could use one of those little hard bristle brushes to get all of that dirt off, obviously outside. I just like to throw it under some water, give it a really good wash off. I mean, it takes seconds to come up really beautiful and clean. The inside of the fan, where I guess the mechanics are and the blades, that's, you know, you can't get away from it. I've got to stand on my little step. You are looking up. You've got to get your, your hands in and get them a bit dirty. But giving it a really good wipe over, again, with a damp microfiber cloth or a wipe of some sort, just gets rid of all of that dust and dirt. And then you quickly and easily get your vent back on there and you're laughing. Okay, Sirocco fans, again, same sort of premise. They've got little fiddly bits and, you know, little bits cut out of the fan blades. So you really want to make sure that you're getting in there and they get really dirty and dusty quickly too. Um, I, I have to laugh because I've seen some families swap over from the white ones to the black ones so that they can't see the dust as often. And I actually think that's a really good idea, but I do love the white. Now, what's cool about these is that you don't have to try and get in and around. They've got little clips here that you can press through from the back. Again, I'm sure Paul's overlaying and you can take this whole cage off, which is really great. Then the fan blade comes off as well. So I just take those outside again, rinse them off under some water, dry them off, pop them back in, good as new. With the rest of it, the uh, I guess the housing and the um, swivel arm, just that microfiber cloth again. You could use a little bit of a cleaning spray. Whenever I'm cleaning, you know, with a spray in the van, I love just a mix of water, again, vinegar, and a little bit of essential oil. So I'll turn towards like lemon or tea tree or something that's really fresh, but also has those cleaning properties to them. So give that a spray, put it all back together, super easy and Boy, they look so much better when they're clean than when they're dusty and dirty. Okay, let's talk about oh, this guy. What's he called? The air conditioner. Okay, let's talk about this type. We haven't had this particular air conditioner before. It is a Truma Aventa. So I had to do a little bit of research. The, um, the guide on it was pretty basic in terms of the cleaning instructions, but I did do some Googling. It says wipe it over with a soft cloth on all the exterior parts and the little vents up here. You could again use your microfiber cloth to wipe all of these parts down. As far as the filters go, it recommends that you change your filters every 12 or so months. And that again would be depending on how often you use your air conditioner. If you're using it every single day and it's getting pretty gunky, then obviously you need to change them out more often. Uh, this grey part just clips out. Again, I should say on just about all of these products, there are plastic clips. So just take your time 
take care don't get frustrated with it don't you know be too hard on it because if you break one of those clips then you're looking at a whole new replacement piece for that part but this clips out this little filter comes out it's literally like a piece of like plasticky core flute mm. so you could try and wipe that over with a soft cloth if it wasn't that bad um, if you didn't want to go to the trouble of replacing it but these filters you can easily get replacement filters online for them let's talk about the washing machine i love my washing machine okay so this is a little kamek teardrop again it's a different type of washing machine than we've had hello in our previous vans What's great about every washing machine, as far as I'm aware, is that it has its own like drum cleaning cycle built in. And the same goes for this little guy. So you could select that and it's going to give that a really deep clean inside the drum. Now you do that, of course, without any clothes in the washing machine. And what I like to do is do it with a vinegar rinse. So again, add some vinegar to the washing machine because vinegar is great. Not only is it going to cleanse, but it's also really good at removing any odors. And washing machines can get pretty stinky, especially if you use it like we do. So we use it as our dirty laundry hamper so rather than having another something to put our dirty laundry in I figure I've got one there we put that in and then I do a wash every day every second day so it's a pretty good system that we've got going on okay let's talk about the leather or the I think it's called PU pleather. pleather pleather thanks Del that's fancy okay so we've got the leather option in this fan um, but you would as far as I'm aware treat them the same now what's really great about leather is with little people you can quickly and easily wipe away any marks in my research I found that a blend or a mix of water and white vinegar is really great and so you wouldn't have a sopping wet microfiber cloth but just a nice damp one from that mix to wipe over and clean everything up i also read that if you've got like greasy stains which with little people can happen a lot on your seats you can sprinkle over that bicarb soda leave it for a little while and it'll actually I guess absorb the greasiness out of the leather so that's great too now that's just the first step you really want to make sure that you're conditioning it to keep the fabric looking its best nice and soft and without any splitting or cracking in it so for conditioning a natural oil is a really great option to use if you don't want to go out and go to the expense of buying like a conditioning product so we just use coconut oil and I'm talking like just a couple of little drops on the micro fiber and just soft gentle circles to rub that in and condition that leather it really brings it up beautifully and doing that regularly will I guess extend the life of that fabric as well okay what else do I need to talk about I need to look at my notes quickly floors, floors. floors. okay air conditioner washing machine leather seats okay floors uh so I mean in such a small space we don't have a, a mop or anything and at this point in time oh look there's my fancy feet thank you to my mother-in-law for my pedicure for my birthday thanks granny um so we don't have a mop in the caravan and at the moment I don't even have a vacuum which is driving me a little bit crazy I've had a Dyson on board for our three and a bit years and it recently decided that it didn't want to play anymore so I'm on the lookout for a really good vacuum I'm actually quite excited about getting a new vacuum in my life um, so if you've got suggestions on a really great vacuum for traveling full time it's got to be heavy duty it's got to be lightweight and preferably small please let me know in the comments below okay so what we do I'm sweeping at the moment which is fine although it does leave some re residual dust and stuff on the floor mopping seriously get down on your hands and knees baby so again you could either do it with a microfiber cloth you could do it with one of those microfiber mop pads and a bit of spray so again I would use my water my vinegar my essential oil mix I love tea tree on the floors not only does it help cleanse and clean but it also smells really beautiful and fresh as well and we found that with the darker floors whilst it might show up those little bits and pieces of dirt and grime the red dirt you don't really see it I mean I'm sure it's still there 
but you won't see it with a darker floor, so that's great. Okie dokie. Shower. Shower. Okay, so I do the same drain cleaner in the shower. And then I've got a great recipe actually for a natural cream cleanser that is awesome for everywhere in a caravan, even your bathroom. So that's going to be in the blog. So that's what I use in the shower. And again, just doing it regularly, I think is the key. I actually keep my cleaning products in the shower. So they're there in my face. So whenever I can, I try and do that to avoid the, you know, the mold and those sorts of things, the build up happening because then you've got a really big cleaning job. Okay, I'm just going to check my notes poorly. Okay, beautiful. So the other two recipes that we are going to include in that blog will be for a natural glass and mirror cleaner and also that cream cleanser that is great for your bathrooms and your kitchen as well. So do jump over and check that out on our website, thefeelgoodfamily.com. We've got loads of information there, great free resources gear and products that we love and use every day and of course for those vlogs. Alright, where are we off to now, Polly? Lake Baramba. Lake Baramba. Yes, such a beautiful off-grid campground with a spectacular view. Loved it. Some of those pesky bugs. <laughs> those bugs. Oh out of control. <laughs> Singing up, baby. Okay, here we go. We've just finished lunch at the Tea Vine. Jackson's the proprietor there. He's a classic character, isn't he? A real country, yeah. friendly, welcoming face. And he told us last time we were here, which was about six months ago, mm. about the work he was going to do on the front of this property. And look, he's done that and more. He's painted the entire place. He's yep. put a huge deck in. He has bands here regularly. Uh, the meals are huge. That we could say if yeah. you've got a kid, you might as well just share a main meal with them because it's a lot of food. And really reasonable prices too, I have to say, for pub food. It is. It's such a great location. I think if you're living along this sort of Fraser Coast area, even the sunny coast, mm. this is really on your, your doorstep. It's, it's the backyard of this region and... When there's places like this and great stories like Jackson's, who he's just a, a farmer, a guy from the land here that saw that this pub was going to get sold out to some overseas investors, mm -hmm. and he went, "Hang on a second, yeah, can't give this up." So yeah, he bought keep it local. Yeah, and he bought it, and now he's just turned it into a a real point of difference, I think for this area it's a real country charm yep. and it's worth a visit it's worth your time you can camp here for free uh either out the front or if you're out the back and you want to be powered it's 15 dollars. that's all right hey and then just go in and you can have a couple of drinks and a pub meal and a good yarn with jackson and yep. his friendly staff we love it yeah awesome great stop okay we are going to go now to a really beautiful location it's about 100 kilometers down the road it is going to take us about an hour and a half to get there mm. and that's because there's a bit of windy country driving but you know just take it easy and yes. enjoy yeah nice this few beautiful nights out there afternoon by the lake <sighs> awesome can't forget to fill up with water well, jasper's very quiet in the back isn't he you sleepy, mate. Yeah. Mate, we got told people have been missing your good morning, everyone. Could you give us a good afternoon? Good afternoon. <laughs> there it is. He's back. Yeah. All right. Bring back the Jasper. You can have a little kip, mate, on the way out. All right, let's hit the road. Bye.
they're filling up the tank. Yeah. And, well, here's a good tip. You always start on number one. Yeah, give me that one. Yeah, give it. Oh, got it in. I got it in. Okay. But seriously, yeah. Tell <laughs> me when you're ready. I think I need you. All right, just go around the other side, the other side of the tap, the other side of the hose. Face them on the other way. There you go. And now just, just push it up. There you go, Boom. you got it's it. It's hard. All right, tell me how that's going. And then another good thing is to see when the tank's dripping because that means turn the water off. Okay. Good job. Another Jasper job, hey? Mm-hmm. A green job. <laughs> Who has the pink jobs? Mum. Who has the blue jobs? You. Yeah. Back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Love Sundays, don't we, Jasper? Yeah, pancake day. <laughs> yes, it is. Although we missed that this morning. We but did... We'll do it for lunch. We'll do it for lunch. There you go. Sunday fun day pancake lunch. Yum. Sounds pretty good. All right, we've just uh, stopped here in a little township of Gumeri. Which is basically 15 minutes from where we were just camping and we pulled over because we just needed to jump into the food works and tell you about our camp this week, four nights? Yes, it was. Awesome, it absolutely yeah. flew. And we were staying at Hidden Gold. It's yes, a good name. Homestead. And look, you can find them on Wikicamps or online on their own website as well. Mm. It's basically a huge horse property that backs onto Lake Baramba, which is part of the Bielke Peterson Dam. Yes, so where yes. we're located is sort of in between like Mergen and Kingaroy. If you were looking on a map in that general location, yeah. it's in the South Burnett region, right? Yes, yeah. that's right. Now, something that's really worth pointing out is that the dam is at 92%. Mm. So as far as seeing it at its best, now would be the time to come. Yeah. However, it's as though when we spoke to the owner, Clint, he said the storms come in and they split at his property almost yeah. and go around. So it looks as though the property is almost in drought. It is so dry. It's really dry. I wonder if it's got something to do with the Bunya Mountains because we're not too far from the Bunya Mountains. So I don't know. You know those weird weather patterns happen when there's like a mountain range nearby? So maybe yeah, that's look, it's... it could be that. Uh, he said right now it should be lush green paddocks. Wow. But against that beautiful blue lake mm. and we had very varying weather like it was incredibly windy which he said was unseasonal as well yeah they don't normally get these crazy gusty winds but it was like really crazy gusty winds look we think that might have been why it was a little bit quieter than normal particularly mm. on the weekend because it is a a boaties paradise oh, yeah. whether you got jet ski boats whether you're a fisherman uh it is super duper popular and it can get very busy at the weekends yes. but we didn't find that we really had this relaxing beautiful environment that had horses you know passing by our caravan window we thought yeah. one was going to stick his head in at one yeah. point <laughs> you know you're just sitting here editing Jasper. Now I came all the way over. Look who's here. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi. Hi. Hello. 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 Hi. Hi. 
<laughs> yeah, it was really beautiful. Um, so the positives definitely are the outlook, like being able to look out of the window and see that water from every angle was amazing. amazing. If you love the water, then this is a great campsite. Mm. I think unseasonally, unfortunately as well, the amount of bugs. I had read on Wikicamps some reviews saying, you know, there's bugs at dusk, dusk and dawn. And you kind of expect that when mm. you're in these sorts of environments, but there was bugs like yeah, it was a little bit biblical bugs. you know like yeah like like a plague almost yeah uh, and not that was bitey bugs though not bitey bugs no, which is awesome which is a bonus yeah. but you know a bug as far as bugs can go. bug you either <laughs> way right Jasper yeah <laughs> and look as soon as we moved from our first campsite up onto the hill and actually faced the van to the wind yeah zero bugs yeah quite amazing yeah don't you think it's so funny? Like, again, we just spent all this time washing the car and the caravan, and we've had huge rain on it since then, and now it's just plastered with the kamikaze <laughs> bugs all over it. <sighs> Another uh, job. Look, it's all right. Now, Clint, uh, who owns and operates the property, is a farrier. Mm. He does a huge amount of work in training backpackers into the business. Yeah. Um, so that's sort of his core business. And then the camping kind of happens around it and is a bit self-sustaining. Uh, he did have a restaurant, and then unfortunately that closed down during COVID. Yeah. But he has got plans to really Reopen yeah, it. get that back up and running because from the reviews back then, it was a huge hit. Yeah, it's worth checking out their website actually because there's a bit of a story on there in terms mm. of what they're passionate about and some of the education programs that they were running as well that yep. they're hoping to get back up and running too. Now, if you love your vino, which I do, although I'm you now... Did. Yeah. Past tense, baby. I'm ten months, <laughs> ten months into my alcohol-free year, so uh, I have to come back in a couple of months. But there are a number of stunning wineries yeah. that are in this area. It's adjacent to Dusty Hill. Now mm. they're closed in February, but the restaurant there apparently is out of this world. It gets such a huge rap, yeah. and even from some other campers that we met said, "You've got to go to this restaurant." It's closed in February. For harvest. Yes. Which They're is a bit... squishing grapes with their toes. Right <laughs> it's a bit of a bummer. But that, that is right next door. So you literally could just walk up, you know, oh, and through the yeah. property, which would be beautiful as well. Yeah. Now, awesome. If you're after a, a beautiful, you know, relaxed farm stay, yeah. but with access to that water to swim, as you said, swim, kayak, jet ski. If you are a fisherman, you can only fish offshore. You can't oh, yeah, fish from the shore. Yeah. You can fish from a boat. Yeah. Which I, I'm not sure why, but there you go. That's that's one of their rules. Yeah. Uh, as far as filling, yeah. For safety. For, For safety. safety. So that you don't slip. Safety first. Very good, Jasper. So you don't slip. That mm -hmm. could be valid. Um, the Bajelki peterson Dam, there are fill points there. There's also a large caravan park there, but we filled up our tanks there on the way in, which is literally five minutes away. Excellent tip. And when we stopped at Dickabrum bridge on the way in when we were coming down from the T-line and we stopped at the little RV stop there. The signage also said that there are water fill points at mm -hmm. the showgrounds here in Goomeri as well. There you go. And the showground is a great camp spot here. Every time we've driven through this little yeah. township, it looks busy at that showground. So yes. that probably speaks to how good it is. Yeah. All right. We'll get out of our Bielke peterson the White Shoe Brigade area. Do you know what that's about? Oh, it was about they they might they. Might be a bit before my time, though. Yeah, look, it was the mid mid eighties, um, yeah, and I remember like this Fitzgerald Inquiry, if you remember that, and they were basically, you know, putting well positioned brown paper bags full of money. And what happened, they put them in certain places and all of a sudden these development approvals would happen. That's amazing. <laughs> Uncanny, really, isn't it? I'm sure that doesn't happen anymore, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It does. <laughs> uh, he's probably right. Yeah. All right, let's get on the road. We're on our way now to our storage shed. We're going yes. to be emptying out the canopy. Not the storage shed, yeah, the canopy. Uh, into the storage shed uh, because that is coming up <gasps> in the next couple of Holy. weeks. Holy. So End of an good. era. End it of an is. era. Start of a new one for it's the 79. It's been happening on and off over the last six months, this mm. canopy build. So it's actually finally happening. So we're a bit excited about that. Yeah, wow. Awesome. Let's get on the road. A couple of hours drive. Let's do it. You happy? Woohoo! Sunday morning. <laughs> Pancakes, yum. Lunch.
de 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 Bruce Highway, rookie mistake, Sunday afternoon, don't travel on the Bruce Highway if you can help it, because uh, otherwise you and everybody else is out there, isn't that right Jasper? Unless you want to have traffic. Yeah. Unless you want to have a slow time driving. <laughs> it's perfect for that. What does Granddad call this sort of traffic? Traffic is terrific. He does. There's nothing terrific about it. Look at that though. It's working. Maybe I have to go slow for it to work. Yoo-hoo! That's, that's a bonus. See? Whoop. Find a gear, Paulie. <laughs> la la la, Sunday. Thanks for watching. Please do like, subscribe, and share our channel. And if you'd like more information on full-time RV travel and living, visit our website, thefeelgoodfamily.com. There you'll find loads of free resources, our weekly podcast, caravan cooking recipes, our monthly Go RV magazine articles, and much more. We look forward to seeing you next week. Take care of yourself and your family, and happy trails.